Okay, finding the sum of an infinite geometric series. If the series converges, that means that the ratio is smaller than one, and therefore you can find the sum using this formula. If the absolute value of the ratio is not smaller than one, the series diverges, and so therefore you would not find a sum, since by definition, divergent means that there is no sum. And so if you look at letter A, this is a geometric series. It's pretty clear here, I think, that the ratio is equal to 0.75, and so that is certainly smaller than one. And so what that implies then is that this series converges. And so because it converges, I can find the sum. And so the sum will equal to A1 over one minus R. I know that the ratio is 0.75, so I can go ahead and put that in my denominator. And what I wanna do now is just double check to see what the first term is. It looks like it's three, but don't be deceived because sometimes it won't be. The surefire way to know what the first term is is to plug in that lower limit for k. And so here I'm gonna go ahead and do that. That's gonna give me three times 0.75 to the one minus one. Well, one minus one is zero. Anything to the zero is one. And so this is just going to be three. And so again, just double check to make sure what the first term is because you might be surprised. Plugging this into the calculator, we're gonna get a sum that is equal to 12. Okay, here in example B, this again has the form of a geometric series, and so I can see that the ratio here is going to equal to negative four-fifths. The absolute value of that is definitely smaller than one, and so that would imply that this series is going to converge. And so therefore, we can find the sum. And so the sum is gonna equal to a sub one over one minus r, and a sub one is the first term, which is going to be found by plugging in equals zero into this formula. And so that will be negative four fifths raised to the zero and anything to the zero power is one. And then the denominator will say one minus negative four fifths. So I'll go ahead and write that as one plus four fifths and typing that into the calculator, what you're gonna end up with is five ninths. Okay, here on letter C, once again, this is already set up in the form of a geometric series, this time with a ratio of pi divided by two. And what do I know about pi? Well, I know that pi is 3.14, etc. If I divide 3.14 by two, I'm gonna get something that's larger than one. And so this ratio is larger than one, and what that implies then is that this series diverges. And because it diverges, there is no sum. And so the formula here is irrelevant. You're not gonna use the formula on a series that diverges. And so we just stop here and say that that series diverges because of the ratio being bigger than one. Okay, letter D is not written in sigma notation, but we can still figure out if it converges or diverges, uh, and then what the sum is, if there is one, the first thing we would need to do is figure out what type of a series it is. And so if you look at it and just think about your two types of series, arithmetic or geometric, this is definitely a geometric series because it has a common ratio of one half. And one half is definitely smaller than one, which means that this series is going to converge. Therefore, we can find the sum. And so the sum is going to equal to, once again, a1 over 1 minus r. In this particular case, it's really easy to see what the first term is. That's just going to be 1 over 1 minus the ratio of a half, and that is going to equal to 2. Okay, final example, letter E. This is not written in sigma notation, so you need to figure out, is it arithmetic or geometric? And this is pretty clearly an arithmetic series. And more importantly, it is an infinite arithmetic series. And so what did we say about infinite arithmetic series at the very beginning of this portion of the notes? We said that all infinite arithmetic series diverges. And it doesn't matter what the difference is. They're always going to either increase or decrease without bound which means that they will 
diverge. And so once you figure out that it's infinite arithmetic, you're done. You can say that it diverges and move on. Just as a reminder though, finite arithmetic series will have a value. And we talked about those formulas earlier in the notes. One formula for if we knew the last term, another formula if we did not know the last term. But if the series is infinite arithmetic, it is guaranteed to diverge. That's going to do it for section 9.5 and our discussion of series. And so if you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out and let me know.